I think the Ta-Nehisi Coates has been interviewed in other places too, but this is him on Democracy Now. I, you know, I don't know that Democracy Now is necessarily, it's not uh, mainstream media, but certainly Ta-Nehisi Coates is a mainstream uh, figure. He was at The Atlantic, right? Yes. Uh, he, Considering yeah. what their output recently? I mean, yeah. his he is like... Uh, Obama has spoken about reading right. Ta-Nehisi Coates. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, uh, and uh, to hear him uh, uh, talking in this way, and it, uh, for folks who listened to this program before or, you know, uh, years ago or familiar with uh, Michael's work, uh, the construction of this is also going to sound uh, like eerily uh, familiar in, yeah. in some respects. Uh, but Ta-Nehisi Coates is on. And we're starting uh, this clip uh, about four or five minutes into it from Democracy Now!, but he starts off by saying, you know, um, before I went to Gaza, he visited Gaza. I'm not sure when this was, a year or two ago. I think ago it was the, recently. West, the West Bank, if I'm not mistaken. This time. Um, Just well, the West Bank. Okay. Um, he said, uh, before, oh, yeah, West Bank, I'm sorry. He said, before I visited, I was under the impression that this conflict as it were the occupation etc cetera, etc cetera, was very complicated and uh just before uh, we get to this point in the clip he's he's relating his experience in traveling around with a palestinian guide in the west bank in moments where the palestinian guide is like i can't walk down that street you you can go but i can i cannot walk down that street um uh, and the the lack of freedom of mobility et cetera et cetera and then let's pick it up here it's, it's very very poor it's a market area has been shut down but there are a few vendors there that, that, that i wanted to support and i was walking to try to get to the vendor and i was stopped at a checkpoint, checkpoints all through the city, the checkpoints obviously all through the West Bank. Uh, your mobility is, is, is completely uh, inhibited, and the mobility of, of, of the Palestinians is totally inhibited. And I was walking to the <laughs> checkpoint, and an Israeli uh, guard uh, stepped out, probably about the age of my son, and he said to me, what's your religion, bro? And I said, well, I don't, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not really religious. And he said, come on. Stop messing around. What is your religion? I said, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm not, I'm not really religious. And it became clear to me that unless I professed my religion and the right religion, I wasn't going to be allowed to walk forward. So he said, well, okay, so what was your parents' religion? I said, well, they weren't that religious either. He says, what were your, what are, what were your grandparents' religion? And I said, my grandmother was a Christian. And then he allowed me to pass. And it became very, very clear to me what was going on there. And I have to say, it, it, it was quite familiar. Again, I was in a territory where your mobility is inhibited, where your voting rights are inhibited, where your right to the water is inhibited, where your right to housing is inhibited, and it's all inhibited based on ethnicity. And that sounded extremely, extremely familiar to me. And so the most shocking thing about my time over there was how uncomplicated it actually is. Now, I'm not saying the details of it are not complicated. History is always complicated. Present events are always complicated. But the way this is reported in the Western media is as though one needs a PhD in Middle Eastern studies to understand the basic morality of holding a people in a situation in which they don't have basic rights, including the right that we treasure most, the franchise, the right to vote. And then declaring that state a democracy is actually not that hard to understand. It's actually quite familiar to those of us uh, with a familiarity to African uh, to African American history. Well, tell me. I mean, at the end of the day, that is not not necessarily well, not unnecessarily either. But it's not uh, directly related to this, uh, you know. <clears throat> well, I guess it is directly related, but it is, uh, you know, I guess the point is to hear context from which these events take place and to hear them, uh, you know, articulated by someone who is a uh, uh, broadly considered a very mainstream figure, I think, in Tana Hazy Coates, um, I think is, you know, that is also a, a change. 
And as a black man, I mean, I well, to, you know, it's not complicated. Michael said it best, and he reiterates those points there. But I, there have been decades and decades of solidarity with Palestinian, the Palestinian cause by many black activist groups in this country. Malcolm X spoke about Palestinians. Um, and then you can look internationally at the solidarity that Nelson Mandela had with Palestinians. Um, in order to really grasp what we are dealing with here, you have to understand the perspective of colonized people and formerly colonized people and black and brown people and what they see when they look at what is happening in Gaza and in just like the actual, you know, quotidian day to day of living in, pa in the West Bank in Gaza and living in Israel. It is the reality of apartheid. That's what he's talking about there. And yes, there are, you know, Palestinians within Israel who, who do vote and they have some representation in the Knesset, but the 2.4 million in Gaza? Separate roads. I mean... No, I mean, the, yeah, it's not it's not controversial. It's a, yes. it's a Jim Crowite. I mean, Zionism as is an exclusion, exclusionary Jewish supremacist ideology is like the lost cause, except we continue to fund it and, you know, support it materially. And ta -Nehisi also was motivated to do this by in the case for reparations. He mentions Israel as a affirmative way of like I, I, I haven't revisited the case for reparations, but he said in the other talk that he gave that he he mentioned Israel as an example of reparations operations being practically pursued and he says he regrets that because he said that before actually visiting israel and yeah that's where we're at Wait, he said this in terms of like uh israel getting yeah like, like, the, like this this was the how the world like the reparations are pursued oh, by the, israel of uh, the the, the gifting the of this uh, of the yes. of the country yeah. is a reparation of some sort exactly um i mean it was, but it's not necessarily as successful as, as one would have uh, exactly. hoped. Precisely. Exactly.